Introduction to Chemistry, Matter, and the Elements. Okay, so let's do a quick little introduction to chemistry and matter. So basically, chemistry is the study of the interaction of matter and energy. And generally, matter is considered to be a substance consisting of atoms. Now, this isn't strictly true, but we can borrow this definition for right now. This is more of a historical definition. What we are going to concentrate on is the classifications of matter in this course. So how do scientists think about matter? Well, matter is systematically ordered into two categories, mixtures versus pure substances. And then we can take each one of those categories and break them down even further. So for instance, we can take pure substances and we can break it down into elements versus compounds. We can take mixtures and we can break it down into heterogeneous mixtures versus homogeneous mixtures. And then we can also take pure substances and break them down into the phases of matter. Okay, so pure substances. So let's talk about elements and compounds first and the differences between those. So basically, if something is a pure substance, that means it has distinct characteristics and every single sample of it has those characteristics. And pure substances can be elements or compounds. So this is really important. So it doesn't have to be a pure element to be a pure substance. It can be a compound and be a pure substance. Now, elements are composed of only one type of atom, okay, one type. And they're all found on the periodic table. So if you look at the periodic table, everything on there is an element. And atoms are the smallest chemically distinct form of matter, okay? And so we're going to discuss atoms in greater detail later in the course. So we'll come back to that. But elements are all found on the periodic table. So some examples of elements, gold, and that's AU on the periodic table, oxygen gas. Now notice that's not just one atom of oxygen, that's two. O2 means two atoms of oxygen bonded together for oxygen gas. Liquid nitrogen, which also comes as a diatomic molecule in the elemental form, and helium, which is HE. Okay, so we can, uh, as I said, we can take a compound and that can be a pure substance as well. And this is when we have more than one type of element or atom bonded together. So for instance, water has two hydrogens and an oxygen bonded together and water is a pure substance. Okay, so compounds have different types of atoms present in fixed proportions. So if you take one sample of water, it's going to have two hydrogens and an oxygen bonded. If you have take another sample, it's also going to have two hydrogens and an oxygen bonded. And compounds have properties that are very distinct or different from the elements from which they are formed. So in other words, when you create a compound by chemically bonding different elements together, you create a whole new substance. And so there are tons and tons and tons of compounds. And these are also called chemicals, but in chemistry we're going to call them compounds generally. Um, one of them is sucrose, so that's just table sugar, okay? So we have 12 carbons bonded, so there's the 12 carbons. We have 22 hydrogens and 11 oxygens all bonded together, and that's going to give us a sucrose molecule. So, sorry, this should say sucrose, not glucose, okay? Other everyday examples of compounds are things like table salt. So we're going to make friends with this throughout the course. So this is sodium chloride, a sodium cation, a chloride anion bonded together, ionic bonding. That's table salt. It's a pure substance. And also water, as I mentioned previously, H2O. Okay, so now let's talk about mixtures versus pure substances. So how can you tell the difference? All right, so when you put two or more pure substances together, then you're going to get a mixture, okay? And each substance in the mixture retains its original characteristics. So for, in other words, it, it is still chemically distinct, okay? So you can mix them together, but each substance retains its chemical nature or its distinct characteristics. And so when you make a mixture, you don't create a whole new substance. 
and you can separate mixtures using various physical separation methods. For instance, examples of mixtures include syrup, and so that's uh, sucrose in water. All right, so let's say we were to evaporate off all the water, we would be left with the sucrose in there, and then whatever else is in your syrup. Um, air is another mixture, okay, and that's mainly nitrogen and oxygen, and a few other gases like argon, small amounts of other gases, that's a mixture, okay. Milk, milk is a mixture, okay, and also cucumber, onion, and tomato salad is a rather obvious mixture. Okay, so now let's just look at mixtures. Now there's two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and, and homogeneous, okay? So now a homo homogeneous mixture is uniform throughout. So like if you were to look at a homogeneous mixture and you kind of, you know, look over the whole sample, you can't visually separate the components, okay? So for instance, if you have homogenized milk, so if you, you that's a mixture, sitting in your fridge, but it's been homogenized, which means that it's basically been treated so that the cream and the water phase don't separate from each other. So that's homogenized milk. That's where it gets its name. Orange juice, you know, without pulp, that's another homogenous mixture. Brewed coffee and blood. So those are all homogenous mixtures, uniform throughout. A heterogeneous mixture is one in which the components do not appear uniform. So for instance, if you take fresh milk, so if you milk the cow and let the milk sit there, you're going to have cream floating on the top. So that would be an example of a heterogeneous mixture. Another heterogeneous mixture is chicken noodle soup. Okay, so we have the broth and then we have the noodles and some pieces of chicken, and perhaps some carrots, whatever else you want to put in there. Uh, another heterogeneous mixture is a nut mixture, so you can see the individual types of nuts in there. And then also something like orange juice with extra pulp, which I do like. Alright, so now phases of matter. Okay, so we have three main categories. There are two others, but we're mostly going to deal with the basics right now. And so those are gases, liquids, and solids, which you're probably already familiar with. And each phase has its own characteristic properties. So this is how they're defined. So gases have no definite shape. So when you put a gas in a container, it's just going to take the shape of the container. They also don't have a specific volume. So if you put a gas in a container, it's going to fill the whole volume also. And so some examples of gases are steam, so that's water vapor in air, Okay, and oxygen gas. Okay, so liquids. Now liquids don't have a definite shape, so that means when you pour liquid into a container, it's going to take the shape of the container. So if you pour a glass of water, the water is going to fill the shape of the container that you put it in. But they do have a specific volume. So let's say that you put in one cup of water into a four quart container, that is not going to you know, fill up the whole four quarts, it's only going to fill up the one cup of water that you put in there. And some examples of liquids, water, obviously, gasoline, olive oil, and vinegar. We're going to learn more about liquids later on in the course, as well as gases. And then finally, solids. These guys have a defined shape and volume, and examples include ice, salt, wood, and granite. So basically, these are your I mean, we're all familiar with solids. So if you take liquid water and you freeze it, you get ice, which is a solid. Okay, so here's a little bit of practice. So identify each substance as an element or a compound. So we're only going to deal with element versus compound right now. So pause the presentation and give it a shot. All right, sodium chloride. So this is a compound because two types of atoms are bonded together. Okay, so we have sodium atoms and chlorine atoms. But of course these are ions, we're going to find that out. So sodium plus chloride minus sodium chloride held together with electrostatic attractions. But this is a compound because it has two types of atoms bonded together with ionic bonds. 
neon gas. Now this guy is an element because there's only one type of element present in the substance. So we can just look on the periodic table and we see neon. Liquid mercury, same, same situation basically, an element because there's only one type of element present in the substance. So if you look on the periodic table, you're going to see Hg for mercury right there in the transition metal section. Alumina, all right, now this is a compound because it has two different kinds of atoms bonded together. So it has aluminum and oxygen. And every sample of alumina is going to have two aluminum for every three oxygen. And then finally, iodine crystals. Now this is an element, and it's kind of tricky, but it's an element because there's only one type of element present in the substance. So we have two iodine atoms bonded together to form iodine. This is how iodine exists naturally. So in its elemental form, it's, it's a diatomic molecule. Okay, so now let's practice identifying substances versus mixtures. So go ahead and try those and then pause the presentation and then we'll go through them. Okay, so the first one, sodium chloride, okay? Every chemical compound is a pure substance. So this guy is a pure substance, all right? So you might be tempted to say mixture because you see two different things in there, but those are chemically bonded together, so that means it's a compound. And chemical compounds are pure substances. All right, diamond. So this is a bunch of carbon atoms covalently bonded together. And diamond is one elemental form of carbon. There are others, like graphite. But diamond is an element, okay? Cottage cheese. So this is a mixture of cheese curds and whey. So that's a, a mixture, not a pure substance. Iron metal. Elements are always pure substances. Soil, or basically dirt. It's a mixture of miner minerals and organic matter and whatever else happens to be in there. So that is a mixture. And then finally, a casserole. There are lots and lots of different kinds of casseroles, but there's always some sort of mixture going on. So you can have potatoes, chicken, peas, gravy, whatever you want in there. Okay, so now for our last little mini quiz, let's identify each mixture, so we know they're all mixtures, as heterogeneous or homogeneous. So go ahead and pause the presentation and give it a shot. Okay, sodium chloride and water, all right? Well, that is a homogeneous mixture. So you cannot separate the individual components visually. They can't be observed separately. We're also going to find out this is a solution. All right, veins of gold in rock, okay? So that's a heterogeneous mixture. So you see rock, you see the mineral, the rock, and then you see veins of gold kind of streaking through that. So that's a heterogeneous mixture. And you notice that they're both solids. So you can have mixtures of solids in other solids. Okay, a casserole is a heterogeneous mixture. So it's a mixture and you can visually separate the components. It won't be uniform throughout, so that's a heterogeneous mixture. Soapy water is a homogeneous mixture, uniform throughout. And then water with ice cubes is a heterogeneous mixture of phases. So it's all water, but it's a heterogeneous mixture of two different phases, solid and liquid.